Welcome to the Bridge TV Network. My name is Bill Tanglin, your host. The Bridge is your source for multicultural news and entertainment, spanning across diverse communities in Brooklyn, New York, and beyond. We bring content, community, culture, and cause together to share the voices and stories of emerging communities. I am excited to help launch The Bridge TV today the new media outreach platform of The Bridge, the multicultural advocacy project today. I am with Mark Meyer Appel, the founder, and co-founder, Dorinder Angelucci. Mark, Dorinder, it is my pleasure to be in your presence. Tell us, Mark, how did you start The Bridge? Well, thank you so much, Bill, for that kind introduction. And it's wonderful to be here at the launching of The Bridge TV. The Bridge Multicultural Project was a dream that we had over a decade ago when the bridge was formed. And the bridge was formed for one reason. And the reason was to build a house, to build a center where all cultures, all religions can join together and work together on common projects, projects that we all believe in as humanity. Over the decade, we've been involved with over 150 important projects that we did together as a community. All our projects involved multicultural communities, black, white, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, all communities joined together, whether we had a blood drive, where we raised over 106 pints of blood, that possibility of saving hundreds of lives, and we did that together. We did the Haitian Relief Fund with the Council General of Haiti, and we did a relief project for Yemen, when the Yemen Muslims were attacked in Yemen. We did so many amazing projects here over the decade, and I'm so proud of the team, the Unity in Action team, and all the staff that works at the bridge putting together these collective projects. Only recently, we went to the Bronx, when the Bronx had a fire, and 21 families uh, were left homeless we went out there. We went out there as a team, as a human team of blacks, whites, Jews, Christians. We went out there. We delivered 2,500 blankets, boxes of food. And we even bought some cash contributions. So this is the work that we do at the bridge. And now we're duplicating the work that we're doing at the bridge right here in Brooklyn, and we're duplicating it on TV. And this uh, TV channel, this channel, the bridge TV channel, we'll be able to expand this program that will be seen not only in New York, but around the world through our various different uh, venues that the Bridge TV network will be available. It'll be available on QTV, be available uh, all over the world. Roku TV will be available on Amazon, will be available all over the world so people can get the message and duplicate what we're doing right here at the Bridge Bill. Wow. Mark, when the vision came to you and you met with Dorinda. How did the conversation go? Oh, oh the conversation. <laughs> oh, Dorinda is, is 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 number one a superb professional. Number one, besides being a just a magnificent person and an open-minded person and a caring person, she's an extreme professional, working in the TV industry for uh, two decades. So she has a long track record of understanding a vision. So when I sent the vision of the bridge, Dorinda immediately jumped on it, and she understood exactly what we were trying to gain, you know? Yeah. Me as a Jew, uh, Dorinda as an Afro-American, but we understood each other. Yeah. We understood exactly. Um, I, I'm not saying that the, the beginning was a little bit difficult, you know? As we approached different organizations to build our network, you know? People looked at us. Are you really doing this? You yeah, know, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, exactly. But we did it. Exactly. We did it. We did it. And yeah. it, that's how me and Dorinda we started this. And we we built on it. We worked hard on it. We every message, every every program that we did, we put a lot of work into it. You know, every detail was important because when you're dealing with multiculturalism, you got to be very sensitive to all the different cultures. You can't have an event and do something at an event which will be offensive to yeah. one religion or one race. So you have to be extremely, extremely sensitive, even with political leaders that come here. We know, they know that this place is a house of God. 
Mm. This is a house of God. Yeah. This is where it happens. I, I and people have to understand yeah. that that's that that you know we don't cross the red line here. Yeah. 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 I have to support that so much because Mark, um, when he came to me with the idea of the bridge MCP in the first place of the Multicultural Center, uh, it was just a, an amazing project. It had a big vision, um, helping him just get that off the ground and connecting the community and all of the different passions that he had in one yeah. place. Um, that was a tremendous effort uh, and, and to undertake by himself. So I, I was very, very honored that he asked me to help support that initial mission. But now with the Bridge TV project, Oh. putting pictures to that and making our voice now a visual medium is just going to elevate all of his initial efforts. So um, this is really I have an important really, question for really you, great. too. New York is a cosmopolitan, let's say, community. And let's... How were you able to get the district attorney's office, the political leaders, the mayor's office... Well, I have to accredit that to Mark. Mark is, um, he's a very um, invested in his community. Mm. Uh, and people take that for granted. You know, when you are a community member in whatever um, part of the borough or your state or even your country, you should participate and step up into your community and be active as a um, political person. Mm. And Mark is extremely dedicated to Brooklyn. He's born and raised, you know, in Brooklyn. His family's here. His roots are here. And he really wanted to ensure that his community and all its diverse pieces were heard in the political scene. So yeah. Mark, he did due diligence by making sure he knew his Congress people and he knew his representatives. And if you want to make this kind of change that Mark is trying to do, you absolutely need to have that kind of footprint. Yeah. So I, Mark, he's 100% credited with all of that. He, Mark, said that this place is the house of God. Meaning, it represents everyone. I've been at quite a few of your events, Mark, and I am totally, truly impressed. I've seen multicultural people from all over the world. I recently had an opportunity of talking with a young lady from Morocco, and she, your name came up. You know Mark, Mr. Appel, at the bridge? Yes. So, Mark, you are truly living up to the expectation by saying, the bridge is a house of God, meaning everyone comes in, see everyone, and talk about opportunities and how best they could help the community. Mark, what would you say in your and Dorinder's conversation, the most difficult time of the operation? The most difficult time of the operation is uh, the prep for an event, you know, when you have an event, you have to have the right combo, right kind of chemistry, the right um, the right time and moment to do what you have to do. Everything is timing about timing. I will give you an example. We had the Bronx event, right? So here we have an emergency scene in the Bronx. We have hundreds of people misplaced out of their apartments. Mm. Uh, Twenty-one people apartments were completely burned out, right? And we put together. In a moment's notice, with the mayor's office assistance, and I got to hand it to Pastor Gil Monroe from the mayor's faith base, uh, who works for the mayor, who called me and said, listen, you're going to go with this group and that group, and you're going to meet the Manhattan, uh, Rabbi Steinmetz's group in Manhattan, and you're going to go together. So we have to coordinate all of this to get all the material, all the equipment, all the blankets. We have to be in the Bronx at 12 o'clock. So... Here I am, it's like, I tell everybody to come 9.30 to the bridge, where we had a little pre press conference with our councilman, Vera Lewis, and we had, and all of us, you know, and this group is outside talking, and this group is outside, and we have to get it together, but you know what? We left at 9.48, mm. and we arrived in the Bronx on the scene, meeting the um, Iman over there, where the, the material was being delivered, we got there 10 to 12. And I, you know what? I was impressed with myself. <laughs> you know, you have seven. You have the Haitian Nurses Association. You had the 67 Precinct Council. You had the rabbis, the Jewish communities, you know? You had the Shmira group. And everybody has to come together. Everybody's car has to be loaded up, mm -hmm. right, with the material that morning. And we have to be out there by 12. But we made it. Mm. We made it and we brought hope and we bought supplies, and we bought love. 
to people that suffered the tragedy of that crazy fire that happened in the Bronx. You know, another thing he just made me think about it is that some of the activities that we do here are not always about um, disasters. Uh, and you talk about timing and making this work. Uh, one of the big things we were doing was a lot of community support. Um, we ran a couple of jazz family nights and art nights. You know, we have also um, an art gallery in the bridge. And the timing of putting uh, active community creative people together with the real people of the community in the holidays, actually during midsummer, was really important as a show of faith from the Bridge Multicultural Project that we really were concerned and we really were actually blending and bringing together people throughout the year. It wasn't just about the timing of being on a disaster scene. So that's a little bit also of the backbone of the Bridge Multicultural Project and the Bridge TV. I'm glad Dorinda brought that up because yes. We're not, a, we're not an organization that's sitting uh, uh, by the phone and waiting for the disaster to happen. The reason, in answering your first question, yes. the reason why we have the strength and the ability to bring these organizations together when we really need them is because we have a good time here. <laughs> we had a great time. We had Jazz Night. We had Michael Jackson Night. We had uh, Halloween Night. I mean, we had the public officials dressed up in costumes and we had children's art workshops and we had all kinds of interesting, colorful, positive things. And we're gonna de be doing a lot more this year. And we yeah. have a lot more networking with Brooklyn One and with other organizations. But that's the reason why we have strength because we're not gonna call people and say, listen, we got an emergency in the Bronx, come over and help me. They say, who are you? Oh, you're the person that was dancing with me last week at the bridge when yeah. we had the holiday festival. You were here last week at the Ramadan dinner when yeah. you were enjoying yourselves and talking about the Lord and the unity of, of people. So now I need you. Mark, there's a thing that's called attractiveness. The large networks, what they do, they call it ratings. But what Mark and Dorinda, what you guys have done, you have created a level of attractiveness in which at any point in time, we have an event, everyone shows up. Packed upstairs. I've been here. I remember a few days ago. Matter of fact, Mark, the last event you and Dorinda put together, and there was the communicator for the Haitian community, and she was literally crying emotionally how good the bridge was to her in providing all these instruments to get to Haiti. Mark, how you and Dorinda, Dorinda is able to create such an, an, let's use the word, a semi-enforced attractiveness in bringing, bringing in all these people to the bridge. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll support that and the Mark can finish too. I think a lot of times the people need a place for their voices to be heard. Mm. And they have come to realize that we really care. And a lot of times, you know, we make media about their projects. And that's another reason why the Bridge TV concept came about is not only is there a place where you can come to, but there's also a place where you're going to get um, assets and production. And then it, it goes further than that one night. So I think the attractiveness part is a little bit of the fact that they know that it's not just a one-time stop. Mm. So to come through here and to be a part and let us help you kind of showcase your event or your situation, you also know that there's going to be um, showcasing your voice. And I think that's a lot of the, the initiative behind making the Bridge TV is also making the voices heard and casting a longer and a further net. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a little bit a part of the attraction. I think, I think getting the people involved uh, when you have a, uh, an event and when you have a program and when you're doing an event, whether it's to save Haiti or doing a blood drive, when people come into the bridge, they just feel like a family. Many elected officials began their career right here at the bridge. Councilman Rita Joseph, the chairperson of the Education Committee, very important committee. Uh, she's in charge of uh, getting our public school uh, 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 back in shape, you know, the structure. And not losing, uh, not losing, last year they lost uh, over 75,000 uh, students left the public school system and went into the private school system. Mm -hmm. And she started her career right here at giving out meals every day. I didn't even know who she was. But we bonded, we spoke, we talked about her. I said, yeah, you, you should run for office. I told her one day. And she said, you know what? 
I am. A lot of people, Jamani Williams, the public advocate, the mayor has been here uh, at least a half a dozen times, you know, and he enjoyed being here. So it's not about an event. It's an event with love mm. and with warmth. So when you have an event, people talk to each other and bow together each other. You've been to uh, many yes. of events where you have Hasidic Jews and Muslims sitting together. Yes. You have Jews and Afro-Americans and Muslims dancing to Haba Nagila on a rescue mission to Haiti. Yes, yes. I mean, that's something that is beyond myself and Dorinda's expectations, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, we had a mayor in New York, Mayor Koch. One of his favorite questions was, how am I doing? How am I doing, you remember? <laughs> yeah. So, my, my final question to you and Dorinda is, is a principle, it, it says, measurable growth in reasonable time. Where do you and Dorinda see the bridge TV network, let's say two or three years from now? I think, I think the, the, the message, if, if you look at the work that a lot of the organizations, national organizations, are now following that unity, that unity uh, message that we gave out. Never would, never would there be in my own community. I, I, I'm saying this. I'm saying this with reluctance, but in my Jewish community, when Haiti was uh, had the hard, uh, uh, the earthquake, many Jewish communities, religious communities, for the first time in history, got together and raised millions of dollars for Haiti. The Muslim groups raised money for Haiti. This not, never would have happened years ago, but we broke the shyness, the shyness of people talking to each other. Don't be embarrassed to yeah. help your brothers and sisters. Don't be ashamed of it, but be proud of it. Mm -hmm. And we made everybody proud as a community. So in two, three years, um, the message that we have here uh, put together at the bridge on Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn is going to be broadcast around the world and hopefully, our hope is, our vision is, that other communities continue to engage. We're not worried about competition. Competition is good. Competitiveness is part of the American economic dream. The dream is that there are bridges all over the world. That and is that we, and, and we, we promised John Lewis, as I said many times in Washington many years ago, we promised John Lewis that we will cross that bridge. Mm -hmm. I you across the bridge. Yes. I also hope that in a few years, not even years, months, I really look forward to all the different organizations um, knowing that they could come here and have a spot on the show, make sure that their voices and their missions and their um, expectations are taped and documented. Um, I don't want to leave anyone out. I think this is a place where some people might for the first time might be on TV and we might kind of help them kind of break that glass ceiling of, you know, having what that looks like to be documented as a production. So I, coming forward, maybe two, three years from now, there's going to be um, hopefully a big investor yeah. <laughs> and yeah. somebody will pick up the whole thing and then we'll get a bigger studio. But right now, uh, the goal is just to make sure that everybody's heard. And we have, we're going to have it on YouTube, we're going to have it on the Facebook, uh, we're going to put it on the web, it's also going to be on QVision, which is on Roku, Instagram. on Instagram, so we, that's our start. But it needs to be a place for sure that everybody knows that they could get their stuff captured and, and disseminated. Yeah. Mark, Dorinda, particularly you, Dorinda, we know that there are goals that you have set for the Bridge TV. Could you tell us what some of those segments might be? Oh, gladly, gladly. Oh, I've been uh, dreaming of a lot of things. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we're going to do something like meet the mayor. We're going to do um, co who's in your code. Um, we're going to we're looking at, of course, you know, I'm looking at having the kids on and some type of kid programming. I'm, I'm jonesing that. <laughs> yeah. Always, always, we're going to have an art segment, thinking mm. about doing something with art, cultural events, and not just B-rolling on our activities, but really kind of focusing in on the charitable organizations that we're hosting. And, and a lot of profile pieces. Very, very interested and in keying into 
how these programs came about and what are they offering and how the community can find out where the locations are of these great programs and giving back and tapping into that. Yeah. That's part of it, right, Mark? Yeah, there's some, there's some organizations which, if you drive by, you see a small storefront. One of our uh, great members is the Haitian Nurses Network. And they're a network of hundreds and hundreds of psychiatric nurses, emergency nurses, that have made themselves available to any emergency. Mm. So people don't really uh, understand and know about this organization. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring them on the show and get that out to the community, get their message out to the community, because there's a lot of, there's so much charitable, I mean, I'm, there is no more, there's no uh, city in the world, in the United States of America, that does more for people, a charity, than Brooklyn. There is so much credible work that you would be amazed at the kind of work and charity and, and work that they do in the community. And we're going to highlight it. Mm. And instead of talking about earthquakes, we're going to be talking about the loving care of so many thousands of volunteers that take time of themselves to contribute and to give back to the community. Yeah. One, one piece that I'm really excited about working on is with this, the bridge concept and the bridge TV concept is we touched it a little bit with our workshops is bridging a relationship between the NYPD and the children, bridging the racism issue and, you know, politics in real time. That is something that we're kind of really hoping to focus on also with the Bridge TV, is bringing those conversations to a place where it could be recorded, and disseminated, and you can go back and really kind of dig into it. So I'm, I'm really excited about working on stuff Let like that. Let me just follow up with what you're saying, Dorinda. The great writer says that where your heart is is where your treasures are. Mark, in regards to what Dorinda just said just now, what do you mean by the voices and stories of emerging communities? Well, there's so many, if you look around the city of New York, don't forget, the census, the latest census shows a complete change of the way the city looks like than it did 40 years ago. Many Asians have come to New York. Many Russians have come to New York. Many Haitians, Jamaicans, Afghanistans, Muslims, Yemenites, Moroccans, they have come to this country and each one of these individuals, each one person that came to this country comes with his own contribution, whether it's art, whether it's song, whether it's music, whether it's costume. Look, look what the black community did in terms of the music world in America. Changed the world. Changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how much I love the music. No town music, right? <laughs> so that changed our life. I mean, nobody can ever, you know, appreciate that unless you're in it, you know? And the changing the population, if you look around the city of New York, you never had so many Vietnamese restaurants, Asian restaurants, Russian restaurants, kosher restaurants. We're going to highlight these establishments because these establishments, these restaurants, these nonprofit institutions, that that's what makes New York great. Yeah. That's why people all over the world, whether they always complain about New York traffic, you know, yeah. and, our, and, and, and the New York behavior and the traffic and the parking violations, but everybody wants to be part of New York. Wow. Because New York symbolizes that Statue of Liberty, that hope, that message of hope and the diversity, where you can be, spend a day in New York City and be everywhere, be in Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a Polish restaurant, and off in the church, uh, in, a, in an Asian restaurant, and you can be everywhere in one day. And really, in, it's like being on a European tour. <laughs> wow. Now, Mark, Dorinda, you are both icons. And I am indeed looking forward, not only to be a part of the Bridge TV, but to be an active participant. 100%. Yes. And, I'm, and it's 100%. just fantastic. That's our story for today. Thank you so very much, Mark and Dorinda, and we are looking forward for the next episode. So if you'd like to be highlighted, if your organization or business wants to be highlighted on our Bridge TV Network, contact us at info at bridgetvnetwork.org and we'll be happy 
to sit down with you and discuss the opportunity. Thank you and God bless.